I thought I'd do a quick upload on the pre-ride briefing that we give to people just as they're about to take their Mod 2 test. Some people are extremely worried about their test and they let their nerves get in the way. Try not to let your nerves get in the way and try not to ride any differently to the way that you've been trained to ride. Don't start to do things differently because the examiner is behind you and because he's watching you. Don't start doing things that you think the examiner wants to see. Ride the way that you've been trained to ride following the correct procedures and you'll be fine. If you start changing things on your test, you're likely to make mistakes. Some people are very overcautious on test. So whilst they've ridden like normal people during their training, as soon as they get under test environment or under the test conditions, they start to ride really slowly or they don't use the power to get up to speed. They're overcautious, they're overly hesitant when making decisions at roundabouts, things like that. Try not to suddenly go into super cautious mode. The examiner needs to see that you are planning ahead and that you can make decisions. Not that you're having to think 17 times before you can actually begin to pull out on a roundabout, for example. So be positive. Make early decisions for your junctions if it's safe to do so and get out onto those junctions if it's safe to do so. Don't be overcautious and don't hold back thinking you'll get split up from the examiner. What should you do if you get split up from the examiner? Well, he'll give you directions. So before you set out, he will tell you what to do if that happens. And when it does happen on the road, he's likely to give you a direction anyway. So if you're on a stretch of road where he knows there is only double yellow lines ahead, he will likely give you permission to stop on the double yellow lines. And if he gives you permission, then that's fine. He's given you permission to do it. You can't ride off down the road without him forever because he won't be able to catch you up. So you're just going to have to stop and wait. So stop in a place where he's given you permission to stop and you'll be absolutely fine. If he doesn't give you permission to stop on double yellows, then don't do it. During the course of your test, the examiner will be stopping you a number of times on the left. Usually with the instruction, stop on the left in a safe place. And on those occasions, that's when you need to find an actual safe place to stop on the left because that is part of your test. Stopping on the side of the road because you've been split up isn't exactly part of your test, so long as you don't do anything dangerous as you move off. So do be positive, do get yourselves up to the speed limit, don't be super cautious and ride under the speed limit because you're frightened of being caught out for speeding. You're more likely to pick up faults if you're riding under the speed limit because you're holding the traffic back behind you. Do what you usually do, get up to speed, ride at a safe speed for the conditions and plan ahead. If the examiner isn't keeping up with you for any reason, then ask yourself, what's that reason? <laughs> it's likely that you're speeding. If they're not keeping up with you, you're probably speeding. So check your mirrors regularly. If you think you've made a mistake, do not dwell on it. One of the worst things you can do is dwell on a thing that you think is a mistake, and then it will cause you to make a worse mistake later on. And what actually might be the case is that what you thought was a mistake isn't even worth marking on the case of the examiner or on the part of the examiner. Very often what happens is a student will think they've made a mistake and they'll be focusing on it. And actually, it's what's called an unfaultworthy mistake. It's something that's not worth marking. And yet the student focuses on it so much that they then make a bigger mistake. So try not to focus on mistakes. Try to let the mistakes go and focus on the next part of your ride instead. Try to apply some common sense. So if you're riding along and there's a queue of traffic on the right hand side and you want to turn right because the examiner's told you to take the next road on the right and somebody leaves you a gap and flashes you, if it's safe to go through that gap, do what you usually do. Go through the gap. Don't be afraid to use your common sense and actually do what you'd normally do so long as it's a safe thing to do lots of people again are over cautious they don't want to um, take advantage of the opportunity to get going because they think they might be doing something wrong but if somebody's flashed you and there is space for you to go then use the gap one thing you shouldn't be doing however is flashing other people or waving or directing traffic you can leave gaps for junctions, but just leave the gap and let the traffic decide whether they want to turn across or not. It does not matter if you take wrong turnings on your test. 
A lot of people get really worried about trying to remember the directions as part of the independent ride, when actually it really doesn't matter. So long as what you do is safe, the examiner can't mark you down. So even if he's actually directed you to turn left and you turn right, so long as you carry out the correct procedures and the safe procedures, he can't mark you down for it. So don't worry about it. You could take any number of wrong turnings on your test and so long as what you do is safe, you'll still come out with no faults. It's not a navigational test, it's a test to see whether you can be safe on the road. Even the independent ride is not a navigational test. Do be nice and positive when you're accelerating away from your hazards. If it's safe to do so, of course. The examiner doesn't want to be behind somebody who is dawdling. So show him that you know how to ride like a normal person, not like somebody who's on test and is super nervous and super cautious. Can I adjust my visor whilst I'm stationary? My instructor told me that I need to keep my hands on the handlebars at all times. Yes, you can adjust your visor. The hands on the handlebars at all times rule is simply that the bike should be under control whilst you're stationary. It doesn't mean that you can't momentarily take your hand off the handlebars, but you shouldn't really be sitting there with it in neutral with no, no hands on the handlebars, drumming on the tank, for example, because the bike's not totally under control at that point. If, as you approach traffic lights, all the traffic is building up in lane one and lane two is clear or only has a couple of cars in it, then choose to use lane two, but make those decisions early. Take the examiner for a good ride, something you'd do on your own if you were riding on your own. Plan ahead though, don't sit in lane one and then suddenly think, oh, I could have used lane two and then swerve out. You need to be planning. So looking at this queue of traffic, I'm thinking we'll go for lane two. And I'm selecting the lane nice and early. I'm not suddenly swerving out at the last minute, making a late decision. If you think about it, the examiner's following you usually on a bike. Occasionally they'll follow you in a car. They want to get through the traffic. They don't really want to sit behind a big smelly lorry. So they take them for a nice positive ride. When you're in situations like this, plan where you think you're going to merge. So I'm choosing my gap between the silver van and the silver car. And then also leaving myself a good distance back from the van. Once again, I've spotted a lorry in lane one. It's also a lorry in lane two who I hadn't spotted, but it's not a problem. And don't worry if you get yourself into lane two and then the examiner says, could you move back into lane one, please? You haven't done anything wrong. It will be because he's about to ask you to turn. Lots of people get worried that they've made a mistake or done something wrong. Just don't overthink things. Some people come to their Mod 2 test with a list of questions as long as their arm and their leg. And usually they're questions of things where they're overthinking. Remember, you wouldn't be put in for your test unless you were ready for your test, hopefully by a good instructional school. So don't twist yourself into knots. Don't overthink. Try to relax and enjoy the ride. Okay, your pre-ride brief for your Module 2. Summary. Number one. Be nice and positive. Don't be overcautious. Make early decisions for your roundabouts and junctions. Don't sit there staring at all the traffic. Number two, get up to the speed limit if it's safe to do so. Take the examiner for a good positive ride. Use the power and get away from the traffic behind you. The examiner does not want to be tailgated. Three, if there's opportunities to use lane two when lane one is getting all blocked up with traffic, Make an early decision, get yourself into lane two, and then use the power to get away from the traffic so that the examiner isn't being tailgated or having a car chase him. Four, if somebody flashes you and the gap is good to go and it's safe, go, do what you'd normally do, use your common sense. If it's not safe, then don't go. If you get split up from the examiner, don't panic, follow his directions, or find a safe place to stop on the left. If he wants you to stop on double yellows, he will give you permission. If he doesn't, don't do it. Don't focus on your mistakes. If you make a mistake, forget about it. Don't focus on it because you'll end up making further mistakes and potentially worse mistakes. Check your mirrors regularly. If the examiner isn't keeping up with you, it's because you're speeding. Keep cancelling your indicators. Press the button more than once. The last thing you want to do is leave your indicators on on your test and fail for something as simple as that. 
don't overthink things. Just do what you've been trained to do. Stop the overthinking narrative in your head and focus. And all that remains for me to do now is wish you the best of luck. Keep your head. Remember everything that you've been trained to do and you'll be absolutely fine. And don't forget, it's not the end of the world if you fail. Just go back and do it again. Lots of people put a bit too much pressure on themselves to pass. People will make mistakes. Some people are just not particularly good under test conditions. So give yourself a break if you make a mistake. Don't worry about it.